Hi, I'm Fox. So today we're going to talk a bit about a project I started a couple weeks ago uh, and that I've mentioned a couple of times now. I wanted to get the ROM off of the Wheelwriter's motherboard so that I could, one, archive it since I don't think it's all that easily accessible, um, at least not from the searching I've done, and two, so that I could try my paw at disassembling it to see some of how it does what it does. This would inform how I write my own code, but also I'm curious about things like its default spelling dictionary, how it stores different key maps, etc. This project was also a good excuse to get a new tool that's been on my list forever, a hot air station from JPC, specifically the catchily named uh, JTSE. It came in far more boxes than I was expecting, but eventually I got everything out and set up. If you end up getting one of these yourself, uh, by default it has a pin code that locks you out of a bunch of settings and it beeps extremely loudly. Uh, the default pin code turns out to be printed in the manual. I, I think it's like 1050 or something, but it's there. So a bit of an explanation of why this tool specifically. Uh, I learned about the brand when Ben Science of the Applied Science YouTube channel uh, said something like, JBC makes good stuff. I looked into it and they've been on my list ever since. This particular station has a couple of things uh, that make this kind of rework really nice. Uh, it has a built-in vacuum pump along with springy suction cups that are designed to attach to whatever you're trying to remove and uh, lift it off the board once the solder has melted. You can also attach a thermocouple to it to act as a regulator or a protector, which I'll talk about a little bit later. After I got everything set up, I realized I didn't want to start with the ROM chip since I've never done this kind of hot air rework and I have exactly one ROM chip. So I found a sacrificial ST board and practiced on that. Also, I, I should say that apparently I am very jumpy, which I didn't think was the case, and I end up being fairly surprised when the chips do actually pop off. So to save you the same agony, I've put a big uh, five second countdown timer over this footage when it's about to spring. Put that on there, and then we're going to uh, turn on the hot air and try to very, as evenly as I can, heat this up. Um, yeah, and hopefully it will just kind of pop off. So here we go. Oh, Jesus. All right, well, it did sprung off. Did you ever play that game Perfection? I hated that game when I was younger and I guess I never, never grew out of that. Anyways, I did another practice. <laughs> Scares me every time. <laughs> and then finally, the real thing. Well, no time like the present. Uh, I got these off. It's hard to know if I, I mean, they're off. I don't know if I did any damage, you know, until I put them back on. And I don't think I have the eyes or magnification to be able to do that. This chip has a much bigger pitch and I'm much more hopeful I can just kind of do it. Um, that's the experiment, I guess, so here goes nothing. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did it. Oh my god. So I had originally actually bought um, a breakout board for this, this chip, but I suppose I didn't measure quite well enough uh, because it was too big. The chip was too big. And what ended up happening was the chip is actually, uh, the surface mount version is about as wide, the, the legs, as its dip counterpart. And so the breakout board I was using, in addition to just not having the right footprint, was using through hole pin headers. And the problem with using these uh, is that the chip legs actually just bump into them physically. So I remembered from a uh, Eurorack module, I think, that there exist these 100 mil, 2.54 millimeter 
uh, headers that are surface mount. And so that's what these, uh, the sort of staggered pads there are. You buy them just like you do normal 100 mil uh, pins and snap them off and you solder them like any other surface mount component. Um, one thing I should mention is that uh, locating them was actually quite hard. I, I found out after I sent the boards off that uh, there are, in fact, other alternatives that have little pegs, so you can put a hole in the board and they self-locate. Uh, I end up struggling with that a lot uh, in this, uh, and eventually I just seated them both into a dip socket because that was what was important, that the, the pins were the correct space for the PCB it was going to go into, um, but they were a bit off-kilter. The other thing you'll see here is that the uh, uh, I believe it's on yeah this side of the board, the traces are length matched. Um, and this wasn't something I thought would be super critical for this application, but I wanted to learn the tool in KiCad and I thought it would be fun. So uh, here I should pop in and say that I ended up at first trying to uh, solder the headers on and I couldn't figure out if it had even adhered. So. Uh, they didn't, and I ended up pulling it off and just kind of practicing on this board just as a, a, a spare kind of test. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just melting all of the solder uh, until it actually looks like it has, you know, melted and adhered to the pads it needs to adhere to. Uh, going forward, I uh, now know what this is supposed to look like, uh, and I have a much easier time uh, actually soldering the headers on my second attempt. Fresh board, new knowledge. Uh, let's let's see how this goes. Fresh board, new knowledge, and let's get the uh, music picked up again. Here we go. Heating up the soldering iron here. You can see the ominous shadow. Boy, that sure heats up quickly. Okay, well, here goes nothing. So can I do this without melting the plastic? This also has like a bunch of bonus thermal mass. Oh, there it goes, come on of the actual pins. Why aren't you melting all the way? Is that on there? That looks all right. Um, yeah, it sure takes a lot longer. And I'm also casting deep into shadow the part that I'm actually trying to show. Oh, glue that right onto the other pin. Air might be a little... Airflow might be a little spicy. There we go. All right. The hope is to just kind of lift this off gently and hopefully leave behind yeah that worked way better than 
it had any right to. So next it was time to uh, actually solder these uh, things and uh, test them. So the process here is to uh, just continue air soldering and then I grab my uh, meter, set it to continuity mode, and I just go through and test does every pad uh, connect to every one of the pins. And it turned out it hadn't. Uh, I think part of this was because of the alignment issues with one of them. Um, I decided to go for the simplest route and just try adding more solder. Uh, and you know, that, that seemed to work. Um, I did a couple rounds of this uh, and eventually everything toned out just fine. to take the end of this thermocouple, which is just like bare metal here, and we're gonna tack this on just like that, sort of to the middle. And the idea here will be over on the, uh, well, why don't I just show you that? I hope this is visible. So if I take this and plug it in to the slot there, why is it not going in? I cannot see. Does it go upside down? Unknown, but that seems to have worked. Uh, and it's showing a not unreasonable number. If I, let's see, does the temperature go up if I hold it? It does, so that's probably fine. This is the tiny number down there. And uh, under here, I believe under tool, uh, thermocouple mode is protection, and the protection number, well, I will arbitrarily set at its default, which was 150. Um, and now, it should be set up so that it will stop doing its thing if that thermocouple gets too hot. Basically, I don't want to bake this chip. It's the only one I have, and I don't know how to get more other than buying more entire typewriters, which I'd rather not do. So hopefully this helps. I should be recording for this, probably. So I've just completely made a mess of all of the all of the solder on this, and I have learned the hard way that work holding is very important for these surface mount components um, because they sure do slip and slide around. I'm also trying to be particularly careful about lining up the pins, which is honestly pretty tough to do when you have just smeared solder paste everywhere. So if I get that down there, will it stay? It sure looks like it. Well, once again, nothing to do but start. So let's start. My hope here, seeing how the solder wicked up to the, uh, onto the other bits. I'm really hoping we, we see the same thing. I'm also just like quadruple checking. This is where I want it to be. Let's find out. here is that uh, I took special care when I was toning this part out to uh, probe at the top of the ROM chip 
and also onto the the pin itself so essentially i was trying to test you know as close as i could to the the connections of the chip did i actually make this connection and uh again i didn't uh and also again i just used the add more solder to it trick uh to get it to uh connect in the end back again so pin four and awesome and are we shorted no it's three two one okay well time for the next step so i have here an md am 27 c020 it is let's see i can show you this it is this ship here it is a uv erasable prom and uh it is pin compatible with uh what is apparently a very sort of standard pin out on mask proms so if i put this in here and lock it and then i come over to my PC here and say read, um, it will read and it should say okay. And if we look over here at the buffer, I've just, I just have a bunch of A5s written to it that was just a test of this particular chip. So the point of this entire exercise here was to not read junk data but try and read this prom. So, already having some problems here. Are these pins too big for this thing? Maybe. There we go. That's pretty in there. Okay, here's the big moment after a lot of preparation. If I hit read, no, poor pin contact, 1 in 31. Okay, did I mess something up? I mean, apparently I did. The question is, how did I mess something up? Okay, that's sanity check here. I've got the chip in, gonna hit read. Awesome. Now what I have done is I have stuck the breakout board into the same carrier that we soldered it in with. Actually, I can maybe relight this in a moment. So I'm going to just stick that in as far back as it goes, which is right there. Let's see, there we go. And uh, hit read again. wrong with that what if I hit ignore well it did something oh that's promising isn't it okay good to know ignore button where it's at um, and the thing I've really been wanting to test is if I take a blank one of these uh, proms here, load it in, and without really looking at the data at all, since it's in the buffer here, uh, I'm just going to say program. Sure takes a minute. Okay. How about verify? Okay. Well, on to the next step then. Ripple check 
here. Okay. All pins in. Let's say no harm, no foul. And that doesn't sit any higher than any of the other components, which is great. I was actually worried about that with it being socketed. Okay, now all we gotta do is put it back together and see if I still have a typewriter. together. Well, that looks like a working typewriter. Oh. I assume that is the... I have lost all of my memory. So let's see what do we have here. Good enough. Um, so if I... Great. Go through the loading process here. It does not know where margins are, but that's okay. Those are settable. Yeah, this absolutely works. Um, but let's set this just for fun. Okay, so here we go. Oh yeah, gotta do my Dvorak. That was the whole thing. I forgot to put Riven in. Let's put Riven in. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll just turn it off. That seems smart. And I will take the wheel out. That also seems smart. And this just kind of clips in there. This will sit in there and we'll turn that back on. That's a bit better. Let's try now. Yeah, okay. We got it. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, one thing I should mention, just as a sort of sanity check, I did end up uh, popping out the ROM and turning the typewriter on. There was a part of me that was wondering, um, for reasons I'll get into in a future video, uh, did I even get the right thing? Or was that just, you know, some other kind of data? Maybe there was the actual software stored on the main chip. And I suppose that could still be the case, but it, it did nothing when I actually pulled that chip out and, uh, and, and started the typewriter. Uh, the reason I was thinking, you know, maybe something isn't quite how I, I think it is, uh, I couldn't make heads or tails of the uh, ROM dump at all. Uh, Ghidra didn't seem to find anything. I am also uh, very new to the whole reverse engineering thing, so I suspect it's going to be a lot of um, reading data sheets, reading the Ghidra book, and uh, going from there. Um, yeah, so current projects are that, figuring out what's on that ROM chip, other than the obvious string we saw earlier. Um, I want to continue building up uh, some demo boards for driving steppers and, steppers and solenoids uh, for the, the typewriter hammer. I've done a little work understanding how the ribbon, ribbon advance mechanism works. Um, it's very hmm, minimal. It's very minimal and a little bit odd, uh, but interesting. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's it for now. Um, once again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.